So now, there are times when uh, we feel a little dejected in life. Life is full of uh, ups and downs. So is your uh, life wherever, at home or at the workplace. We are more into workplace. We are here to uh, see how we can strategize our professional growth. So, so we will be positioning our talk into in terms of uh, workplace alone. So this uh, dejection is an outcome of rejection. Rejection as a person. Rejection of your ideas or, uh, or uh, in any manner, uh, there is a stumbling block that comes in front of us. It could be, uh, it could be an interview when you are between jobs. Uh, it could be a proposal or a project that uh, you are putting across to your uh, seniors. There could be anything. And I'm sure Mr. Karthik has, with all his experience behind him, he has gone through all these ups and downs, dejections and rejections. Let us see how is it that he has got over all these stages in his life and what is it that he has to offer us. Over to Mr. Karthik. As we discussed earlier, how we look at... Uh our lows and uh, upsetting phases and rejections uh, is what determines our outlook towards life and whether it's uh, your business, your profession or whatever be that aspect that you're looking at. Uh, some kind of rejection failures is inevitable. Uh, in fact, J.K. Rowling says in her amazing speech, if you have not failed, if you're not trying to take risks, then you have already failed in life. If you are trying to avoid failures, then that is the biggest failure of all because you are not even trying. So anytime you try anything worthwhile, uh, that in itself means that there are going to be naysayers, there are going to be non-acceptances and obstacles of all kinds. So uh, talking through my own examples, as I said earlier in life, uh, I used to be very, very sensitive, uh, take things very closely to uh, heart in terms of uh, the slightest upsets and rejections. But over a period of time, uh, circumstances, situations, uh, good mentorship have helped me uh, try and uh, look at them in a different angle. I will quote a couple of examples that uh, immediately uh, come to my mind which is about uh, my entrepreneurial journey on game-based learning. So one of the client interactions uh, that I can look back to, the prospect wanted me to uh, do some simulation games. Back at that time, I was uh, in my uh, set of offerings, simulation games were not there. And I used to always mention, uh, I stick to a fixed mindset of uh, board and card games or a limited uh, variety of digital games. So I went and had a couple of conversations with them. Uh, I kept saying what I had and they kept saying their need. Finally, it is their need that had to be satisfied. And uh, because my offerings did not fit in their bill, I had to come back. But at that time, it made me think, why am I uh, limiting myself? Uh, how do I get the expertise uh, of what the client wants? My limited thinking meant that I had to, I also had that feeling that I had to solve all their problems back at that time. But over a period of time, I started realizing that I needed to get into partnerships of complementary providers, people who actually are into the business of providing simulation games. So that perspective made me start searching for providers of simulation games in corporate environments. This particular prospect whom I spoke to, uh, we didn't continue our conversation because I didn't have anything to offer, but I still continued my research. Over a period of time, I came across two, three different partners who actually had the solutions to what this prospect was looking for. And uh, 
later i went into other prospects other clients and i started doing my work but after i uh, built this partnership maybe about 6 to 8 months down the line i uh, again casually enquired the previous prospect just in case they had uh, still got openings or other uh, in terms of are they have they found a suitable uh, solution provider and to my surprise they hadn't found out uh, and uh, they were still looking for so this was again an uh, opportunity for me i said back then i didn't have an answer to what you were asking but later i managed to find a partner so can we restart our discussions now we started our discussions i brought in the partner and the solution was perfectly fitting and we had very good set of discussions now i was a lot more confident about myself and more con- confidence was not arising out of my own inner uh, uh, solution that i could provide individually but confident in the the solution set that my partner was providing and that was possible only when i changed my mindset to uh, thinking that i am a part of that ecosystem which is into providing solutions for the client rather than me having to provide everything and uh, the conversations went well but i think for a different reason uh, because of budget constraints on the prospect side and other priorities it didn't go through but i still felt very happy at the end it is not about getting the uh, deal done alone that gives you happiness it is just that you went you were able to take up a solution uh that could have potentially solved the client's problem so this was uh one of the journeys i could immediately recollect where i could uh, i uh, over a period of time i changed the way i approached uh, solving a problem and uh, was able to offer a solution so i have a similar experience uh, to what kartik just shared uh i remember how difficult it was in the initial stages when i had moved into coaching from corporate so there was no sales team to bring in a pipeline of clients uh enrolling clients was a challenge i was so afraid of rejection of failure of failing myself uh and hearing a no that uh i really didn't put in my best through the enrollment process and then i happened to read this book called yes lives in the land of tools and i was so inspired by it that it changed my whole perspective enrolling clients was no longer about selling credentials it wasn't about me it's about the prospect it was about the service it was a value we are creating and uh, the synergy that we are uh, building together the deep transformation that takes place in the client and the cascading impact of that of that on others in his or her life and on the world so we do a uh, fear rejection and we do experience rejection in real life in interview it could be a job that we're looking for it could be a promotion or it could be in a business proposal it could also happen in personal life so how can you shift the focus and the light from you be curious explore ask questions be open to learning be willing to fail and make mistakes because we learn a whole lot from every mistake that we make there's so much to learn on the do's and the don'ts <laughs>